Hello, one and all, and welcome to Campus France live at Nirma Business School here in France. Um, today, we're here to talk a bit about the prestigious Masters of Science degree uh, from right here in France. France, or Lexagon, as it's sometimes known, um, because of its shape, and it's actually the founding country of the world's first business school, and a handful of some of the oldest and most uh, reputable higher, higher education establishments for business that exist today. I'm your host, Alexandra Lawton, and if your heart's set on becoming a Masters of Science, uh, 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 getting the Masters of Science degree and to study abroad, then you're watching the right program, and we're here to help you discover why Neoma Business School might well be the place for you. So more than that, um, there are actually three campuses in France. There's Paris, Rennes, and Reims, and we'll be hearing a little more about that a bit later on in the program. Uh, just to say, if you want to have your say, please leave your comments on our Campus France Facebook page or get onto Twitter, that's at Campus France or hashtag Choose France. And also check out the Campus France's video on uh, YouTube for more information. Now, I have the great pleasure of introducing today's guests. That's uh, Anne-Sophie Courtier, the director of MSc programmes, and Fernando Lambias, who is the head of international and postgraduate recruitment and last but not least, uh, Sylvia Fernandez, one of Neoma's very own students, who's undergoing the MSc International Project uh, Development course, I believe, at Neoma's Rouen campus. Hello, all. Welcome and great to have you on the show. Hi, hello. Alexandra. Thank you for having us. Hello, Alexandra. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. hello. Right, so we're just going to get underway because I'm frankly, personally, very, very keen to understand and and hear all about this course. So just tell us, who are you? Uh, what's the Master of Science degree at Nirma, Fernando? Um, okay, so uh, thank, first of all, thank you for having us. And it's a pleasure to, to be discussing about our Masters of Science uh, with you guys today. So the Masters of Science, it's a kind of degree, uh, it's a kind of master. Currently in the, in the school, have three, you could say that we have three kinds of masters, the Masters in Management, the Master of Science, and uh, the Executive MBA. Uh, in terms of the Masters of Science, you could say that are quite professionalizing. And the idea is that you specialize in one topic, one discipline in the business uh, world. And it's a 15 month program with courses and then follow with a, uh, an internship. A 15 month program, goodness. And in the yeah. internships, you, that's, that's very interesting. So that's actually ingrained in the course. It's a, an obligatory. Internship. Yeah, exactly. It's built in. So within the 15 months, you would do like eight to nine months of courses followed by a six uh, month internship. I see. Okay. And, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and Sophie, what sets Neoma really apart from the other business schools here in France or in the world? Yeah. Yeah. In France and uh, in the world, for sure. Thank you, Alexandra. And uh, hello uh, to all of us uh, and all of you. So uh, Neoma Business School is uh, uh, really um, an incredible business school because we are triple accredited uh, with the AQUIS, ACSB and AMBA accreditation like 1% of all the business school in the world. So we are very proud of that. We also have three different campuses, as you said, Alexandra, and uh, uh, another um, uh, key figure uh, of our school is uh, the number of international professors uh, in the permanent faculty. So we have 70% uh, of uh, our faculty which is composed by international professors. So this is a guarantee for our students to have a very good level of uh, courses and international professors. Uh, we are really involved and uh, um, yeah, they, they are uh, aware of uh, difficulties of multiculturalism and, uh, and uh, adaptation uh, to the friends and the uh, and campuses. So, yeah. So you, you kind of touch all the bases with the level of international professors on all three campuses. Yes. And actually, I, exactly. was gonna, I, was, I was really going to ask you what the main differences between the campuses are. Um, I might throw it to Fernando, but do jump in if you, if you can think of anything whimsical or serious, whatever, you know? 
Well, I, I would say that um, there, there is a major difference between Rouen and Reims and Paris. Uh, Rouen and Reims are, the, for the moment, the biggest campuses we have. Paris, it's a Parisian campus. It's like a city-like campus. However, this is going to change if everything goes well next year, where we're going to move to another place in Paris and the campus will be even bigger. And we're very proud and happy about that. But so far, Rouen and Reims are the biggest campus we have. They host uh, around, I would say, 4,000 4, students each yeah. every year. Um, That's huge. I would say, yeah. yeah well, it, overall, we have around 10,000 students. Um, wow. Mainly, they are based in either Reims or Rouen, as I said. And, and then, of course, the rest are in Paris. Um, or in our, one of our partners universities during an exchange, right? Uh, that, that's also possible. Um, in terms of the campuses, um, let's say that the, the, the big, the big camp, uh, programs, they are both taught in Rouen and Reims. However, when it's, uh, when it's about, uh, when we're talking about the MSCs, the Masters of Science, uh, that's where we can find a difference. There are some MSCs that are uh, only offered in Rouen, some only offered in Reims. Some of them are in both campuses and one of them in Paris. Basically, the main difference is the, the specialization somehow, if you want, that the region of Normandy gives to Rouen and the region of uh, Grand Est or Champagne gives to uh, Reims. If you, so it's a cultural, example, you're looking, a cultural element is involved as well. There is a cultural mm -hmm. element, but also the industry based in each one of the um, of the regions, for example, there is a, a huge um, pole of supply chain here in Rouen. I'm based in Rouen, by the way, um, which just is like uh, linked to. Yeah, just like Sylvia, exactly, and, and Sophie as well. We have the three yeah. are, today, yeah. the three are coming are, are, are talking to you from Rouen. Um, right, I'm Billy, Billy Nomades in Paris, then. So hello. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, well, the fact is that the supply chain, why? Because we have the port. The port is in the, the Seine River that is connected to Le Havre and Paris. So that's, that's huge here. Uh, if you're looking for finance or more uh, related or something more related to luxury industry, well, you have to go to Reims or Paris from next year, from this uh, coming October, sorry. Uh, so as you see, there are differences, although the kind of life the students have in these two cities, it's resembles quite a bit uh, because they are medium, medium-sized cities and, and both they are quite international and quite uh, French at the same time. And of course, the kind of life you have in Paris is a little bit different. Um, that's, that's, that's really that's good to know sure. that actually the the, culturally it, it plays a part on your course. That's very interesting. Mm. You don't get that everywhere, I'm sure. But um, mm. I just want to say that the, the French government's just announced that they're opening their doors to international students from the First of July, is that right? I mean, anyone jump in here? I I only heard it on the television recently. So, um, uh, and Louis, sorry, Fernando. <laughs> no, it's okay. Would you like to answer that, Sophie? Well, yes, I'm Sophie. Yeah. I was just wondering. We've heard enough of you, yeah, Fernando. Thank you. The, this good. is a very good news Bye. for all of you and uh, and also for for us because uh, as you said uh, the French government uh, uh, announced uh, the uh, yeah that uh, international students will be allowed to join uh, France uh, from July the first and uh, this is a very good news so we have a lot of hope for the next intake and uh, a hope to see you face to face on campuses and uh, to help you to join us directly so yes this is an official announce and uh, this is a uh, great and uh, very good news it's fantastic yeah, it's, for France, it's a good not news. everybody it's, uh, i'm sorry yeah, so i, I just off that, i would like to add just two, two, two things yeah. The good thing is that it's a, it's a, it's a, an amazing news. We, we, we were actually wondering if this is what's going to happen. And in the end, it did. So we're, we're more than happy, as San Sophie said. Um, this is, um, we need to be cautious here because it's a, like a progressive opening of the borders in the Schengen space. So it's yeah. France, but also all the other countries being part of the Schengen space. And, um, we actually know that there could be still problems in international mobility, such as planes that are not ready yet or, or the visa um, delivery in, in each country could be different or each country has its own uh, 
uh, situation. Yeah. Each country so, has its own situation. I was just going to say France is extremely, it's at the forefront of um, advancement, I'd say, after this yeah. uh, this crisis, because not every country is actually opening its doors. Um, I know for a yeah. fact that England, uh, to domestic students and international students alike, they are only offering online courses. I think uh, they've, they've announced about 10 months as it stands so, you know, even if you live and go to Cambridge University at the moment, you, can only, you can't go into the lecture theatres, you have to do it online. Um, but I was wondering whether Neomav, if there were problems with visas, if there was a sort of a backlog of, of admin to do to get to France in order to study at Neomav, would you offer online courses to international students also? To anyone? Well... Um, let's say that we have a, 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 a two. We have two ways of answering that. We we have come up with two ways of answering to this potential situation, and mm-hmm. um, and in the MSCs, I'm, I'm t- let's say globally in the portfolio, but in the MSCs as well. Luckily, uh, on the one hand, we have these uh, distance learning uh, courses uh, that will be provided for some of the MSCs. And on the other hand, so this is for international students that won't be able to come to to France on time, like in October. That's when uh, this, the, the the intake starts for for all the most of all the MSCs. And then yes. some of them they will move, not move. Sorry, we will also open a second option uh, to come yeah. to study with us in January. Oh, that's fantastic. Gosh, you really are covering all the bases there, yeah, Matt. And um, <laughs> and Silva, you're you're here. You're in you're in uh, Raw at the moment. I mean, it's it's fine, isn't it? You're 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 fine after this this crisis. You're you're just gonna stick around. And, and actually, I was going to ask you, why did you choose Nirma out of interest? Silvia, are you there? Yes. I think we might be. Oh, here we are. Yes. Hello. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, uh, well, back in Colombia, uh, hi, everybody. Uh, I study in a very prestigious business school, and we really trust very much the relationships the school has with other international universities outside of Colombia. So when I was offered uh, Neoma and I saw all the possibilities and all the masters they were offering, uh, that was first the reason why I picked, because there were many options. Uh, and right after that, I started to check more uh, what was guided more to the objective of the career I want to have. And the International Project Development Master was perfect for what I was looking for. And yeah. as soon as I saw the, uh, the, ver- the statistics about the international students, the professors, I was completely in love with the program. Did you hear anything else? Because it, it's true that Nirma offers a sort of a veritable smorgasbord of courses and, and really you know, there's something for everyone, really. But I do hear it's actually quite competitive to get into. Did you feel that? Yes, well, in my case, uh, I was very uh, dedicated to my studies uh, back in Colombia, and I was awarded uh, with a scholarship at Neoma uh, for my good results. So, (laughs) yes, so I think I had to work a lot for it. And once I was in the master with my classmates, uh, even though it was a very uh, interesting environment and very international, there was always this very healthy, like, rival not, not rivalry, but just like, you know, like a motivation to get better at what you're doing and to be really good at the master and just not get the average grades. I think all of us were interested in getting top grades the entire time and top results. Right, so you're all sort of in healthy competition with each other to sort of... Yeah outdo one another that's um that's nice it feels like uh, going back home with my brothers <laughs> um but so uh, what qualifications do you need to apply um and sophie uh to apply you need a four-year bachelor degree so this is uh the the first step and also uh, a, um, a good level in english uh we are asking uh uh, level uh, an equivalent of uh, number six uh, to the IELTS exam certification. So a four-year back bachelor degree, but um, there is no precise type of background. Uh, type of background, you can have a background in business, but it's not uh, an obligation. It can also be uh, a background in the um, philosophy, in sociology, in uh, engineering 
and uh, also architecture or uh, photography and uh, so on. So we have a lot, a lot of, uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of different backgrounds. And uh, this is um, what is really interesting in uh, the mix of students. All the classmates are really different and they can, um, yeah, they can provide each other a lot of things so during the group works and uh, and uh, within the master of science so yeah it uh, never mind your your background you need a four year for your background so the international students and the domestic students safe to say that they mix well but i just want to go back to you having to be able to speak english to a, a level to come and study here do you need to speak french uh, <laughs> wow. no, it's not necessary. Yeah, it's not necessary to speak French to join our program because they are full English taught. So yeah, all the courses are in English and the professors speak English, everybody. All the communication is in English, but uh, you can attend French courses and uh, it can be necessary if you want to uh, apply for an internship, for example, in France. Again, um, after the course period, you have a period dedicated to the professional experience, and this professional experience can be um, uh, done in France or abroad. You can go back to your country if you want, uh, or in another country. But if you want to, uh, if you decide to stay in France for this professional experience, most of companies will ask you uh, a minimum, yeah, a, a minimum level of French for sure. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's the reason why you can attend courses and uh, French courses during uh, all the course period. Wow. Okay. And uh, Sylvia, do you speak French? Yes. Wait. Un petit peu. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad that you She said speaks that. very yeah. good French. Yeah. Now we're just trying to find out, Anne Sophie. Um, if, let's say, I'm French. Well, I'm half French. Wait. So, okay. Um, and I am lost uh, outside the bakery in town. And I want okay. to go to a butcher's. Um, firstly, how do I get there? Just make up the directions, but involve the words bakery and butcher, butchers in, okay. in, in okay. French. Normalement, je ne suis pas la personne. La bonne personne pour donner de indications, oh, et... <rire> mais <rire> oui, parce que je ne suis très bon et pour loca localiser le lieu, mais oh. je pense que pour aller à la à la oui le pâtisserie ou quelque chose ah. c'est très facile en France parce que il y a une pâtisserie dans toutes les villes donc c'est très facile de trouver. Oh. Hein. <rire> you know what? That isn't just good French. That's sly. <laughs> and that is really getting on the culture. Congratulations. I think you just everyone give a round of applause. Yeah, exactly. it's nice. It's good. Oh, excusez-moi, je ne parle pas français. Je connais pas l'endroit. <laughs> he basically tried to get out of it in French, which is almost better than <laughs> the directions. Um, thank you very much for that, Sylvia. Um, so you, we've got the internships that are included in the course. Um, it's just, it just, it brings me to this next question. What's the rate of employment uh, when the course is, is, is finished, when, you know, you send your students off to fly? And mm -hmm. that's for Fernando. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, let's say that, uh, that according to our, our service, we, uh, um, let's say that one year or uh, two years after the graduations, we, we conduct service to understand what, is, what happened to every batch of uh, graduates that leave our uh, that left our school at some point um and um, the the statistics they say kind of that uh, let's say if i'm talking about all the mscs uh it would be around 75 percent of the the batch would get a, a, a employment before graduation and then within the first six months of uh uh, after the graduation, uh, like 100%, they, they, they find a job. That first job Goodness. after graduation, it's found. Some, it depends on the MSc, but some of them, they get even before, I said 75, before uh, graduation, six months after graduation is 100%, but some of them would be three months after graduation. 
um, with an. When you can't uh, argue with a hundred percent, that's astounding, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're we're lucky with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And with an an average uh, annual salary of around, it's it, again, it, it depends on the discipline. Finance will get a little bit more, but then marketing maybe a little bit less. Depends, and it's also like not entry. I wouldn't say it's entry level because it's a master's degree, but uh, it's not uh, like a like a manager's uh, level degree. Uh, sorry, salary, but it would be between forty two to forty three thousand. Um, euros um, annually, yeah. Yeah, I'd say that was a, that's a pretty good starting salary. It's a pretty good starting mm. salary for anyone, especially yeah. in this country. Yeah. Uh, so really, that's again. I don't think luck has anything to do with it because if it's uh, every year, a hundred percent within six months, I think I chose <laughs> the wrong mid year. I think I chose the wrong <laughs> job. <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, maybe, maybe what. Sorry, Alexandra, maybe no, no, one no. point we could add uh, about uh, this um, uh, employment rate uh, is the, that at bus Neoma Business School, all our students are, um, uh, they have the course period, but we also have a service dedicated yeah. to our students, which is called the Talent and Career Service. And mm. this Talent and Career Service helps our students to get a job, to write their CV, their motivation later, and they have people dedicated to different area, uh, geogra geographic area uh, in the world. So, for example, a team dedicated to Asia, a team dedicated to America, South America, North America, uh, to help them uh, to get a job and to be really aware of difficulties or um, expectations from companies, especially in this uh, zone. So during the course period, all the students have a course dedicated to that, which is called Shape Your Career. And uh, it's not the case in all business schools. So that's the reason why I wanted to, to mention it, because uh, it's uh, very specific to Neoma Business School. Quite mm. right, yeah. So it's a bit like sort of um, going in for an interview. It's like a mock interview almost, but it's a course. So you prepare someone mm -hmm. for that. That's fantastic. That really is. Um, as you can see, Campus Live, hashtag Campus Live. Do have your say and stay with us. So, and Sophie, you were talking to me a little bit about the, uh, the classes that are on offer. So anything from anthropology, sociology, uh, to, to, to anything in the Masters of Science uh, degree. Do, do the students eventually have to specialise? Um, when the students apply to a Master of Science at Neoma Business School, they need to choose one of Master of Science. Uh, and uh, we have a large portfolio of programmes, and this portfolio is split, uh, split in three different parts. Uh, finance, marketing, business and management. Uh, in each um, uh, part of Master of Science, uh, we have one of them which is more generalist, uh, dedicated to students who they know they would like to work in marketing, but they don't know exactly uh, the type of job, the type of area or discipline. So we have one Master of Science more generalized in each different category. So, uh, and then for students who are already really aware of their professional project, we have a specific Master of Science, for example, uh, again, in marketing category, um, in wine and gastronomy for uh, people uh, really attract, who would like to work uh, with um, the champagne and uh, the three stars uh, restaurants and uh, things like that. And also luxury marketing. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's very, very nice to taste a lot of things and to, to find differences. Uh, on the, the marketing point of view, and uh, also luxury marketing. But in the other category, like finance, we have one generalist like corporate finance, but also things really, really specific, for example, uh, to get the certification CFA uh, to become an international uh, finance uh, analyst, and uh, also uh, another certification like the financial risk management 
or uh, the CMA and uh, so on. And in the third category, business management, we also have one master of science more generalist in global management and also things very specific like master of science in cultural and creative industries or supply chain or uh, human resources or international project development like Sylvia's and um, and uh, entrepreneurship and innovation uh, and uh, a lot of things in each master of science students will find most of the time one certification to get or to prepare they will find some business cases some links with the companies and uh, uh, a lot of different partners so yeah they they need to choose they need to specialize um, but uh, they can choose one master of science more generalist if they are not ready to be very very specialized now well that's fantastic that's a, that's all that's very kind almost because people are in such a rush to usually get you in the doors get you out of the doors and you have to be ready whether you're ready or not so that's uh that's fantastic but Silvio, haven't forgotten you there hello <laughs> <laughs> but what's your favorite course here do you actually know what it is that you want to do as yes, well, I, yes, I do. So first of all, my favorite courses, as Anne-Sophie said, are, for example, we had a course that was called business planning. So for my final dissertation or my, the uh, my thesis, I'm doing an entire business plan for a company in my case. So it was very interesting because basically you, you learn how to be an entrepreneur with all the like details and advice from a professional which is we had an indian teacher he was incredible and it was a very interesting course and uh, we had another one that was cases in international a uh, project development which is as well a uh, basically studying case studies of real companies in the world and how they're, they might have had either failures or successful uh, experiences in the part of project development so this could be either uh, IKEA going to other countries, uh, the success of Tesla in either in China or their failure. So cases like that where we can really learn what happened, what was the mistake or what was the correct path they took for this. Uh, right. We had a lot of strategy courses as well, which are extremely important and interesting as a project developer. Um, and also there is a very interesting part, which is, for example, classes on negotiation uh, like negotiation strategies. And we had an entire course. Can you hear me? Yes. In there. Uh, we had an entire course completely dedicated yes. on how yep, to negotiate, on how to negotiate with uh, people in different situations, with different conditions, with different uh, goals. So it's it was a very interesting program. And as well, uh, as Anne Sophie mentioned earlier, we had a certification, which is Prince 2. Uh, and Prince 2 is a project management certification that is very important uh, in companies. It's mostly used in Europe and in the UK. So it basically gives you an entire language of how to communicate inside of a company in the, in the part of the project management and the similar methodologies. So it's very interesting. What? You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure we froze briefly because there's the electricity coming from you. You seem so passionate about um, about what it is that you do here, um, and, and that's really, really nice to see. You know, that kind of that kind of energy, um, especially in a time that has um, has, has has not been, uh, let's be honest, not been that easy. Um, so you keep going with that, and I, I just uh, <laughs> well, I suppose I suppose the the, the question is, what is your favorite thing? Uh, about when, and when studying at Neomat, it doesn't actually have to be about the course itself. It could be mm -hmm. something more sort of personal, or I don't know. If you dare tell yeah. us, of course. I do. Well, first of all, for me, it was very interesting the part of the international teachers. So I got the opportunity as well, not only to have a Chinese teacher, an Indian teacher, French teacher, but we also had a Colombian teacher. So I feel like that kind of gives students a sense of being back at home and having your similar way of learning uh, in a very international class first that uh, also the support neoma gives you with all the administrate like all the administrative some bureaucracy that happens here in france so uh, i think you will mention that later about the hub but there is an organization inside of neoma that helps you with mm -hmm. absolutely everything that you have problems with 
Uh, so it's very interesting. And also, uh, there's a lot of courses that are directed to the individual trajectory of each student. So we have uh, things related, as Anne Sophia and, uh, said earlier, uh, with the job search, uh, with uh, your leadership technique and everything. And that was my favorite part in the entire master. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sylvia. And actually, I, I can't think of a better time. Uh, we're going to show you a quick video that's going to give you a taste of uh, what it's like to come and study at Nyoma in France. Take it away. I choose to transform the world. Each morning, I look at things differently. I rise to meet challenges. I'm committed. I use all of my energy to reinvent the world. I choose to study here. And also here. And tomorrow here. To study in a place I enjoy. To develop in the professional environment best suited to me. I am part of the world and I push back its boundaries. I choose to learn every day. To meet people who work and create. People who leave. People who are building the world of today. And also who are thinking about the one of tomorrow. I choose to, to innovate. innovate to expand the limits. Because I love life when it's simple. And also when it's complicated. And especially when it's moving and changing. I test. I take action. I give encouragement so everyone can succeed together. I seek out excellence in technologies fun in all day and technology of tomorrow. I choose to be a part of history. And to be part of a community. With her? With him with them, to share, to communicate. I am unique, but I'm also a part of the whole, of a group, and a network. network. I, I am connected. connected. No, my business school is me. It means me. It means me. It means me. It's me. I choose Neoma Business School because the world is changing, and I want to participate in its transformation. Can I come study there? Can I come study <laughs> with you guys? <laughs> it looks fantastic. Um, so that was the video. And um, again, if you want to have your stay, say or uh, any comments about uh, Neoma or coming to stay, any questions even, do uh, go to our Neoma uh, Campus France Facebook page or get onto Twitter and that's at Campus France Paris or hashtag choose France. Also, check out Campus France's uh, videos on YouTube for more information. Now, uh, Sylvia quite rightly mentioned something called The Hub. Fernando, for those of us who don't know, a bit like me, let me see, uh, what is The Hub at Neoma? Is it like a, the Death Star? Is there sort of a Darth Vader character? I mean, what is it? <laughs> no, actually, it's quite, quite handy people. Uh, they, are, they are quite helpful. Um, we have a hub in one of the three, in each of one of the campuses, sorry. And uh, they are part of uh, a bigger administration uh, area that is called the registrar. The hub is basically the, the, the guys that will help you with all the administrative stuff within the school, but also outside the school, within the city. For example, if uh, the, the, these are the guys who will welcome you to the school, to France, who will help you with housing, help you with uh, opening a bank account, uh, uh, I don't know, health insurance, uh, the, the private health insurance as well. Those are the guys who will even accompany you through your, your, your studies here in the school because they are also in charge of, uh, it's like the reception desk. So they are, they are here for you, to talk to you, to, to help you with uh, Either not 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 so much the academic, but yeah, the administrative and mainly the life, life in Rouen, life in Reims, and life in Paris. So they are pretty pretty uh, pretty cool people. Stick. I mean, when I moved to France uh, all of seven years ago, it took me forever to work out how to open a bank account. So I wish I had a yeah. hub. <sighs> well, anyway, well now anyway. now you just have the welcome days, and during the welcome days, you have the banks that are coming to the campus. They come and, to you yeah. on top of it. Yeah, they come to you, yeah. of course. And uh, well, for, for now, let's say that that was in September and the, the September and January every year. 
This coming September is going to be a little bit different. So we are, we're still working on that because not all the international students will be able to come. Uh, mm. Of course, uh, the, the announcement we were discussing earlier today uh, gives us a lot of hope that they will be able to come, but uh, maybe they, they will not be able to come in on time. So we are also trying to put into place some virtual welcome days. And, yeah. uh, hopefully that, that will be done and will be communicated to, to all the international students coming this year. Well, I mean, there is a point that one can't ignore, obviously. Um, and so just coming off what you just said here, what do, you, uh, what do international students do about accommodation? I mean, do you offer it there? Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd say it's through the hub. They, they, let's say that once they are enrolled, they receive, a, um, I'm going to go with all the practical thing. Um, they receive a, a communication from the hub. They say you need to fill in this form. They choose the kind of accommodation they want, the kind of budget they want to allocate to that, uh, to that expense. And then uh, using our partners, using the, the crews, very important here in France, but also other private partners, uh, we, we managed to provide some kind of accommodation option that it's um, related to what they want or what they can afford. Right. Okay. And um, mm. are there any big names, just, just to change the tack completely, are there any big names? Uh or notable businesses that have actually come out of uh, the Masters of Science course at Neoma that you can think of? When you say and come out. And, and, and Sophie. Um, so I'm saying yeah. that people that have graduated from your school, are there any names, famous uh, things that we would have heard of uh, us sort of oh. lay people? Oh, yeah. When they graduate. Oh, yeah. We have a lot of different, very big names, uh, like all the different banks, for example. I can it's not possible to to say all, all, all the names but uh, and also in luxury sector we have people on uh, LVMH and uh, Hermès and Chanel, Chanel and Dior and uh, uh, on Champagne, Tétanger, Winard and uh, so on and also in the um, automobile sector uh, for example uh, Peugeot, Renault, but also um, uh, uh, Ferrari or um, Lamborghini uh, in uh, some of our programs. And uh, also at uh, L'Oréal or Nestlé or Lactalis or very big names of uh, companies. So it's impossible to to, to have a, a, a list, an exhaustive list, because there is so so many, many companies that, uh, yeah, but um, a lot of them are really famous. And we also have students who decide to create their own startup because we have a Master of Science in inter- Entrepreneurship and Innovation, and students can create their startup with the incubator. We have three incubators on each campus. So yeah. it's also one possibility. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say that um, Nima has actually been described as one of the mo- more sort of innovative and enterprising schools. And um, you sort of do allow the students the freedom to, to, to innovate and create. Um, it's yeah. not like that in every other business school, let's be honest. Um, but uh, Sylvia, can you tell us your experience of that? Yes, sure. So uh, I also had classmates that were developing their own project with Incubator. And in my case, as I told you before, with the business planning class, uh, most of us at the end ended up thinking that it was even a better idea just to go into the business planning uh, instead of doing just like a normal thesis, because we saw that it was very factible that the project that we were planning would end up happening with the help of the Incubator at Neoma. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, I, if I were a prospective student, honestly, and, and again, journalism, that's great and everything, but, uh, <laughs> but I really do want to, I'm not joking. I know this sounds terrible and, and a bit tongue in cheek, but I do actually want to have a look at, at what else this course offers because it seems endless, really. Um, but just in a more practical level, money. I mean, let's get down to brass tax here, honestly. Uh, what's, uh, What's the average monthly budget for a student? I mean, does this actually does include accommodation, food, and let's let's throw in fun as well uh, per month. Uh, Fernando, what 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 would you say for a student per um, month? Well, we usually say that this uh, depends on the city, but let's say Rouen and Reims are a little bit cheaper than Paris. 
you can you can find around 750 euros uh, budget to cover all those things. I'm not talking about holidays though. Um, <laughs> but maybe I don't know if Sylvia she could she. Could yeah, I mean, when you. When you are with your classmates, you're always trying to check like how's the budget of everybody to see how much you will ask your parents or how much you will need to survive in the city. And it goes from 500 euros to you will meet obviously people that will have bigger budgets, but I'm pretty sure that from 500 to 750, you can already find accommodation and pay your groceries. And as Fernando said, living in Ron is way cheaper than in Paris. I bet that in Paris you need minimum like a thousand to be kind of fined but, but yeah, here in yeah, running behind me it's not even it's this is just a backdrop it's just been painted on a car <laughs> on a bit of cardboard i'm actually just outside i don't have anywhere to live so <laughs> um yeah but, yes, so it's, it's, it's affordable then it's affordable i mean it's, yeah. that's 750 max that's not a lot for for a month okay and and part-time jobs do you, you see students other students doing that yes in my case i was do i was being a babysitter as a part-time and with a French family. So with them, I was only getting money for fun as well, because when you are going out with your friends, sometimes you need a little bit more money. But I was also learning a lot about the French culture, about like practicing my French a lot. And it's, it's, it's super easy to get a job in here, in coffee shops, bars, everything, as long as you have obviously a little knowledge of French that will help you to communicate. Sylvia, you've inadvertently put your foot in it again. Do you know any French nursery rhymes? And if so, sing it. No, <laughs> no I don't. <laughs> only joking. I don't. I'm only joking. We'll get back to more serious things. And so actually, <laughs> back to the money. I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's important. Um, tuition fees for the course, and sophia what, what are they, um, yeah. per annum? Yeah, tuition fees for uh, all our Master of Science, uh, uh, except one, uh, are 16,500 uh, euros. And uh, so this is uh, um, the amount of uh, for all our Master of Science. Yeah. Okay, I see. Um, and just uh, two, it's a sort of a two prong question. So international students that want to continue to live in France after the course, um, you know, for their jobs. And I suppose I'm, I'm taking the temperature of the climate uh, geopolitically in Europe, I'd say. Would you say it was easy culturally and professionally for an international student to continue to work on, on um, in France? Uh, Fernando? Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I would say that, let's see, if they want to come and work uh, to stay here in France, um, the, 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 the only obstacle they might find is the, the French, uh, the fact that the, they, uh, they need to have some French skills. Um, and may, some of them, they don't. So international students, they might, they might come, they like the, the fact that they can study here and then they go back to their country to carry on with their either internship or professional career. Uh, some of them, they prefer to stay in France. So they, they catch up with the co French courses that we provide here. Um, some of them, they just go to another European country. I would say uh, the possibility is there. The programs will allow you to go into what it's called uh, the, two, the one year or two year stay back period. Uh, I say one year or two year because it depends on the nationality. Uh, for example, if we're talking about India, Indian citizens, they, can, they, they get a two year stay back option, uh, which right. is basically they have two years after graduation to find a job and then to stay and work full time after graduation. Uh, otherwise it's one year, which is quite, f frankly, it's quite fair. I mean, if I'm an international student and I would like to get into the job market as soon as possible, I would not wait one year to, to start looking for an option, right? So I will no. try to do it as soon as possible, even before graduation, as, 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 as we, we already mentioned that it's possible. Um, so, so yeah, the, the possibility is there. They can do it. Uh, I would say that if it's in France, French uh, would be required. Oh, of course, it depends on the kind of uh, of, of uh, missions they would have to go through on the on on the on the um, uh, on the on the job on the job offer. Let's say on the job position. Yeah. But um, but otherwise, it's totally possible. And actually, that's the idea. As I, as we said, it's in eight to nine months of courses followed by a six months internship. 
the, the six month internship, the idea is that it will allow them to already um, be in the job market, either in France or in another part of the world. And uh, the, the first nine months, of, as Sylvia was describing it a little bit, um, and also on Sophie, thanks to, to our talent and career, help, help them to get that in, that in job. Uh, to help them get them. I say, and actually, you know, Sylvia is uh, basically three quarters of the way there because you know that babysitting mm. and learning the French with the French rhymes. I'm pretty sure, you know, we'll see you. We'll see you at top of the food chain quite soon. I'm sure. And finally, <laughs> finally, um, and Sophie, how do you yeah. prospective students get more information on the course, and how do they apply? Because I'll tell you, hot dog, I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah. Just before answering you, uh, 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 a very little mistake about the, the tuition fees. Uh, it's always less than seventeen thousand uh, euros, but it, it's uh, sixteen thousand uh, and uh, nine uh, hundred euros, not five hundred. Okay, so sixteen thousand. 900 euros so a little mistake but it's always less than 17,000 euros uh right so yeah so it, it was just a, a a little mistake sorry for that and uh, uh concerning you. Uh, the, sorry we forgive you <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, concerning the application, so students uh, will be able to have all information on our website. They will have to apply on the website. So it's written apply here. So they have to join their CV and motivation letter and recommendation letter and uh, uh, they will have to uh, answer some questions with uh, a platform called Easy Recruit. Um, and uh, they will have to prove their level of English. And if they are not able to prove it, we can organize a specific test for that. So everything is really, really easy and well described on the website. All informations are linked to the um, Master of Science are available on the website and they can show some videos uh, and webinars uh, organized with the, the different heads of uh, programs. So, yeah, everything is really clear. So I have no doubt you will find the information you are looking for and uh, you are uh, yeah, able to, to apply if you are interested in, and uh, we would be very happy to welcome you on campus uh, at the, the new intake or the new intake. Yeah. And also, I really if believe, I may, I really believe it. If, of course, yeah. Fernando, please. Just if I may, if after reading the website you still have questions, you can write uh, an email to the email address that uh, yeah, sure. will be appearing right there. So that's uh, that's uh, where my team gets the all the info requests uh, that um, we we that everybody can send, and we will give you an answer as soon as we can uh, well, to help you fantastic. go through your your study abroad project. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, uh, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for. Um, thank you so, so much to Anne-Sophie Courtier, the head of MSc programs, and uh, Fernando Yambias the head of international and postgraduate recruitment and also the lovely Sylvia. Thank you so much, so much thank for you. joining us. And, um, and thank you for watching. I really hope that this helped you all on your quest uh, for higher education and perhaps an adventure in Paris, Reims or Rouen. Um, I'm Alexandra Dawson uh, signing out just for now. Now, uh, once again, and I can't say it enough if you want to have your say, Please leave your comments on our Campus France Facebook page or get onto Twitter. That's at Campus France Paris, uh, hashtag Choose France. And also do check out Campus France's uh, videos on YouTube, including the one we saw during this program, uh, for more information. Now, thanks for joining us and see you very soon, we hope. Thank you. Thank you.